In this video, we are going to try to devise a solution, and a very elegant solution in fact, to the 97th weekly math challenge. And the problem goes as follows. Given any positive integer n, let s sub n be the familiar sum from i equals 1 to n of i, q sub n be the sum from j equals 1 to n of j to the 6th power, and quite frankly, I do not have the closed form of q sub n memorized. You can always try to derive it using, for example, the Stirling's numbers of the second kind. And of course, we can always look it up if we have to. Nevertheless, this seems very contrived. j to the sixth power, that's a very large power. But for now, let's finish reading the question. And we will go back to q sub n. We have p sub n being the sum from k equals 1 to n of 2k cubed times, now we have s sub n inside the p sub n, s sub n squared minus s sub k squared. And we wish to find, and to look at this, the last three digits of the fourth root of q sub 2019 plus p sub 2019. Okay, I feel like we have a long journey ahead of us. So how do we begin? Well, we see that we have s sub n squared inside the p sub n. And if you have studied the summation from i equals 1 to n of i to the sum kth power for k equals to 1, 2, and 3, you may be aware of a fascinating theorem. And that is that sum from i equals to 1 to n of i squared is actually sum from i equals to 1 to n of i cubed. I will not prove this here, but you may have memorized that the closed form of the summation is n times n plus 1 over 2, and you can also show that the closed form of the second summation is n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4, which is the square of this. You can prove both of these by induction or some other clever combinatorial methods, but we will take this for granted. Basically, what we have to realize is that s sub n squared can be written as the sum from i equals 1 to n of i cubed, and we're not squaring this, we're raising it to the first power. So that seems a bit more simplified. So let's denote this by, for example, t sub n, which allows us to write p sub n as a sum from k equals 1 to n of 2k cubed times t sub n minus t sub k. But the chances are, even writing it like this doesn't quite give us a clue on what p sub n is. So to make sure we really understand the nature of this expression of p sub n, let's try expanding it out for some values of k. So we have 2, let me just take 2 outside the summation, and let's say k is 1. When k is 1, we have 1 cubed times t sub n minus t sub 1. But what is t sub n minus t sub 1? Well, t sub n is n cubed plus n minus 1 cubed, and plus 2 cubed, then plus 1 cubed, and t sub 1 is simply just 1 cubed. So 1 cubes are cancelling out. So t sub n minus t sub 1 is going to be the sum from 2 cubed instead of 1 cubed, all the way to n cubed. So that's t sub n minus t sub k. What happens when k is 2? When k is 2, we start with 2 cubed, then we have t sub n minus t sub 2. But t sub 2 is going to be 1 cubed plus 2 cubed. So now we are taking away 1 cubed along with 2 cubed. So t sub n minus t sub 2 is going to be, we're going to start with 3 cubed, then go all the way to n cubed. And hopefully you see the pattern here. We're going to continue on all the way to when k is n minus 1. When k is equal to n, then we have t sub n minus t sub n, which is a 0, so we don't have to worry about t equals to n. But when k is n minus 1, we have t sub n minus t sub n minus 1, which is going to cancel out all of these, just leaving n cubed. So in the end, we have n minus 1 cubed times just n cubed. And now, here is one of the most important assertions I am going to make throughout this video, and that's that this thing is equal to sum as i and j ranges between 1 and n, such that i is strictly less than j, of i cubed times j cubed. So what I'm saying is that this entire thing is adding up a bunch of i cubed times j cubed, such that i is always less than j, and they are between 1 and n. And we see that, because we have, because when i is 1, we have 1 cubed times 2 cubed, 1 cubed times 3 cubed, 
1 cubed times 4 cubed all the way to 1 cubed times n cubed. And when i is 2, we have 2 cubed times 3 cubed, 2 cubed times 4 cubed, 2 cubed times all the way to n cubed, and so on, all the way to when i is n minus 1, and we have n minus 1 cubed times n cubed. So we know this entire thing is equal to this. But now, how do we go from this expression? How do we establish a connection between this expression and q sub n, p sub n, and maybe even t sub n that we have defined above? Well, realize that in t sub n, we have i cubed, and in our p sub n, this entire thing is actually p sub n, has i cubed times j cubed. And how can we get i cubed and j cubed to be multiplied to each other where i and j are different in relation to t sub n? Well, we can try squaring this because when we square t sub n, so let me go back down, when we square t sub n, so that's 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all the way to n cubed times 1 cubed plus 2 cubed all the way to n cubed, Realize, when we multiply this out, we are going to get something that is similar to this expression. Because, fix any i and j, think of any i and j, such that i is less than j and i and j are between 1 and n. So let's say, let's think of i is 2 and j is equal to n. We are going to get 2 cubed times n cubed when we multiply this, and we are also going to get n cubed times 2 cubed. So we have 2 times i cubed times j cubed for these specific i and j. And you can make the same argument for any i and any j. For example, we're going to get 1 cubed times 3 cubed. So there's 3 cubed right here. And we're also going to get 3 cubed times 1 cubed when i is 1 and j is equal to 3. And you can repeat that argument to realize that this thing is actually 2 times sum from i, this thing, i and j between 1 and n, of i cubed times j cubed. But we have to add something to that. Because in addition, we also have 1 cubed times 1 cubed. We have 2 cubed times 2 cubed, all the way to n cubed times n cubed. So we have to add sum from i equals 1 to n of i to the sixth power, because 1 cubed times 1 cubed is 1 to the sixth power, 2 cubed times 2 cubed is 2 to the sixth power, and so on. So we know t sub n squared is equal to this. But wait, we know both of these expressions. The first one, the first one, wait a bit, is p sub n. That's p sub n. And the second one we defined a long time ago as q sub n. So we know t sub n squared is p sub n plus q sub n. We are 99% of the way there. But before we finish it up, I'd like to take this time to recognize two people. The first is Yasin Zhaoui, whose proposal heavily inspired this challenge problem. Thank you, Yasin Zhaoui. And I also recognize Nathan Lowe for being the very first person to correctly answer this challenge problem. So a huge shout out to Nathan Lowe and Yasin Zhaoui. But now let's finish this up. We know t sub n squared is this, but we know s sub n squared is t sub n, which means, which means this thing p sub n plus q sub n is actually s sub n to the fourth power because s sub n squared is t sub n. But fourth power, don't you think that sounds familiar? Well, we wanted to find the fourth root of q sub 2019 plus p sub 2019. And from this, just from this, we see that s sub n is a fourth root of p sub n plus q sub n for any positive integer n. And we wish to find the last three digits of this expression for n equals to 2019. So let's do so. So we want to find s sub 2019. And we know that's simply 2020 times 2019 over 2. Because s sub n is sum from i equals to 1 to n, which is, I think I have written it down, n times n plus 1 over 2. So we know we have 2020 times 2019 over 2 which is 1010 times 2019. And the last three digits, we only have to look at 10 times 19, which is 190. And we are done. The final answer to this 97th weekly math challenge is 190.